Well, I know about Iraq. I, th I don't actually think the, the justification for Afghanistan was a lie. I mean, it was very clear it was about self-defense. I actually agreed with that justification. In fact, I delivered the letter from Britain to the UN claiming uh, that the seeking authority for the invasion, I guess you'd call it uh, under Article 51 of the UN Charter self-defense against Al-Qaeda and the government that had uh, facilitated Al-Qaeda, the Taliban. Iraq was more complicated. I think there was a lot of groupthink inside the Foreign Office, but after 9-11 it became very clear from the top down that the government wanted a particular account, the Prime Minister wanted a, a particular account of the threat, and the evidence was massaged to fit that prerogative. It wasn't the other way around. We didn't look at the evidence and produce an, an analysis that Iraq's WMD was a threat because in fact we had been doing that for many years and had come to the conclusion that Iraq's WMD was not a threat. So the impulse to change that story came from the top. Mr Blair once said uh, in a media interview, it was a throwaway line, he said, you know, once um, you distance yourself from, from America, it's a long way back. Do you think that that influenced his foreign policy? Absolutely. I mean, he was a lapdog. He was a poodle. Um, you know, everything was about America. I worked on the Middle East with the British Foreign Office for many, many years, and there was a very clear transition during the Blair years. We used to go to Washington to talk about Iraq and the Middle East to offer our, our own views about what the policy should be, you know, Britain's own independent analysis and recommendations. But after a while, and towards the end in particular, after 9-11, it just became that we went there to receive our instructions to be told uh, what to do.